Kitco Mining special coverage of Explore 2023 is brought to you by Radisson Mining Resources. Welcome back to Kitco Mining's ongoing coverage of Explore 2023 in Montreal. My next guest is Michael Gentili. He is Director, Strategic Advisor, and Board Member at Radisson Mining Resources. Great Michael, serious. welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. So you're contributing to Radisson in a number of ways. Uh, can you uh, tell us why you're so excited about Radisson right now? I got, I'm one of the largest shareholders of the company. I got involved in 2019. Uh, we had a very bullish view on gold at the time, which remains to this day, and is being playing out with the high gold prices we're seeing. Uh, I was very attracted to the high grade of the deposit earnest. Uh, it's the, one of the highest grade, is the highest grade deposit in North America, not owned by a major today. So we've got about a million ounces at around 10 grams a ton, which is an exceptional grade. And it's also in one of the best mining camps in North America, in the B2B Gold Belt. There's six mills within 75 kilometers of operation, highway right to the site, lowest drilling cost you could probably find in Canada to drill. Really great place to operate. All the majors, a lot of the majors are there, Agnico, I Am Gold, El Dorado. So a great, great mining camp, very, very high grade and a lot of upside potential. And so the deposit's more than doubled in size since I became a director in, in 2020. So we've seen a doubling of the resource and we're continuing to grow the deposit every drill hole we put in. Right, so, so this is the, uh, the, the O'Brien project. Uh, so the highest grade mine in Quebec not owned by a major yep. and it, essentially surrounded by majors Correct. as well. Yep. So uh, this is, um, now you've said the deposit has essentially doubled yep. since you've, you've been an investor, yep. since you've been involved. So what is the upside potential for this? Like what, given, given where it is geologically, given the known, the known deposits around it, and given how much it's ramped up in the time that, you've, uh, that the exploration's been done, what do you think is the higher end potential for this site? Great question. I wish I could show you the guys the cross section here on the, on, the, on the video here, but basically the deposit's been drilled to about 600, 700 meters deep. Multiple deposits in the camp, like Agnico's La Ronde deposit, go to three kilometers deep. We have a known intersection at around 1,100 meters deep in the deposit. The old O'Brien mine, historic mine next door, went about 1,200 meters deep. So we know at a very minimum, this thing's got twice the depth potential that we have today. So just using really broad numbers, you could potentially double the size of the resource if you extend it to depth. The other exciting thing is we have 5.2 kilometers on the Cadillac Larder Break. All the deposit stays constrained to about 800 meters of, of strike length. So we've got you know, 80% of the strike length basically been untested. And it's, it's, you see repeating structures across that trend as well. So you know, blue sky, I'm assuming director, I gotta be careful what I say here, but I would say definitely multiples of where it is today. Another interesting characteristic, Ernest, is that 90% of our drill holes of the last three years have hit gold mineralization. So the hit rate on this deposit is fantastic. Very contiguous, very good controls on the geology. So basically when we drill, our resources expand. And so we're currently embarked on a 10,000 meter program. We just announced a $5.5 million financing uh, yesterday in the market. Very hard to do. We got very successful financing that we did. Right, I, I saw you ramped it up. Exactly. It was at 5 million and, and over more subscribed. people needed to come in. Exactly, so we're gonna take that 10,000 meter drill program probably to 40 to 45,000 meter drill program over the next 12 months. So you're gonna see a lot of drilling and like I said, when we drill, we expand the resource. So I'm very confident the resource is going to continue to grow in the future here at Radisson. All right, and and where uh, what where are you at in the in the development process? So you're uh, how how far away are we from potentially uh, seeing production? So the nice thing is because of the available infrastructure. Like typically, if you're in, in the remote parts of Quebec or more parts of Ontario or other parts of Latin America, you got to build your own mill, you got to build your own roads, you got your own power. We got roads to site, power to site. There's six mills within 75 kilometers of the site. So in your worst case scenario. These ounces, very, very high grade, are highly likely to go into one of the major's mills in this cycle at some point in time, right? What we're trying to do here is show the market, the other major mining companies that may not be in Quebec today, that would like to be in Quebec, that there's two, three million ounces of gold here. You could put your own mill in here and produce 150, 200,000 ounces a year. That's what we're trying to drive towards. So we think this mine is highly likely to get developed in this cycle. You can accelerate that by putting it through someone else's mill or a longer timeline to develop a standalone mill. But if we're doing that, it means the deposit has gotten much bigger and our show is going to be very, very happy. But your downside protection is very good here because you've got really high grade ounces in a camp that's hungry for ore and you've got the highest grade in the camp. So that's a really good setup to have for, for investors and shareholders. Right, so you mentioned the, uh, the, the 5.5 million. Yeah. Uh, I think it was just yesterday that you had the, uh, it was upgraded to 5.5 from five. Um, so what, what are investors uh, saying when you tell them about Radisson's prospects? Clearly you're not having uh, trouble. Yeah. Uh, a lot of what we've been hearing from juniors, uh, it's been a bit of a, bit of a hard uh, environment to be raising money. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's not the case for this project. What are, what are you hearing from investors when you talk to them about that's it? That's a great question. So our head geologist, Vivian Janvier, is here at our conference as well. He's done a great job building a very robust geological model like I said, our hit rate last year was 90%. So I'm, I'm an investor for a bunch of you. I'm an investor in the sector. When I give someone money, I want to know return on investment. So if you drill, what's your chances of hitting? How many ounces are you going to add? And are those ounces economic and likely to be cash flowing ounces in the future? I think Radisson ticks all those boxes. Low drill costs. So for $150 a meter, 
you put 30,000 meters in the ground, we're adding anywhere from three to five ounces per meter drilled. So investors can see that ROI of if I give you money, you're gonna grow your deposit. Your process is growing. I know those ounces are highly likely to be economic and highly likely to be way more valuable than they're trading in the market today. Versus some other stories which are more speculative, which I invest in as well, it's sort of a hit or miss type proposition, right? Heads you win, tails you lose kind of thing. Here we really know we're adding value every hole we drill. The costs are under control, the model's predictable. So that's why investors, I think, are backing us. Even in this tough market, they're giving us the money to grow our project. Right, so nine hits for, for every miss uh, yeah. is, uh, is uh, pretty great for this type of a project. Exactly, and, and talk about in O'Brien, we're drilling $150 a meter all in. If you're drilling northern Quebec, northern Ontario, you're five, six, seven hundred dollars a meter, right? So you got to find four times as much gold per meter drilled in those remote locations you do when your drill costs are low. And a lot of investors don't look at drill costs, but it's a very important characteristic for creating value and the hurdle to have an economic deposit. Right. Now, um, I wanted to also, well, I should, I should just ask you, you said that, uh, that you, you believe that this could be producing in this cycle. Yeah. Can you give me a little bit, uh, optimistically, uh, what, how, how soon could that be? Look, it's the, the permitting, everybody loves to be in Quebec and Canada for, for the rule of law in the U.S., but the permitting timelines are long, right? I mean, talking, best case scenario, probably three to five years. I'm pushing probably more than five years and beyond. That would probably be in a toll milling scenario. I mean, we're, we're working on permits to go underground right now. We're pretty far advanced on that. So we have, we're quite advanced on that process, but there, it is a lot of work that goes into building a mine, infill drilling, et cetera. But we, it could be within that three to seven year horizon, I'd say. And depending on what scenario you choose, whether it's toll milling or your own mill, obviously toll milling is much faster than, than a standalone mill. It's more permitting, more, more uh, difficult to, uh, to get permitted, but it's a great jurisdiction to get permitted and a great place to work. All right, and then uh, also wanted to get a sense uh, of the of the the broader the bigger picture because I know you're you're involved in in other companies as well and and you you're very good at keeping the temperature of the of the broader sector so uh, this has been a very difficult environment for uh, for juniors to raise money Radisson notwithstanding uh, are you seeing light at the end of the tunnel for for juniors look I, it's it's an incredibly difficult environment and surprises I was actually here last year and gold was sixteen hundred dollars and fifty an ounce I remember saying I thought it was pretty sure it was the low the UK just intervened to suppress yields on their bond curve because they had a bit of pension crisis on their in their bond portfolio gold's gone up three hundred fifty dollars an ounce since last time we were here last year take a look at a hundred juniors that are walking around the floor here all those stocks are probably down thirty to fifty cent lower than they were that time last year I've never seen this in my career earnest where you have such an incredible backdrop. Gold is making new all-time highs in almost every single G7 currency except US dollars. And US dollars were two to 3% away from a new all-time high. You look at the junior expiration sector, it's looking at depressed, never before seen negativity at, since probably gold was $1,100 an ounce in 2015. So that kind of dichotomy to me is only resolved in two ways. Either this sector is gonna have a massive move higher next year once that sentiment improves, or gold's gotta fall Five six hundred dollars, five or five hundred six hundred dollars an ounce from here because there's just such a spread between the gold price and the value of these juniors. Something's got to give. On top of that, the major mining companies, the Agnicos, the Barracks, the Newmont, they're swimming in cash right now. They're producing a huge amount of cash flows. Their balance sheets are clean, and they're looking for the first time in several years at growth again. Investors are now asking the question: Okay, you've been free cash flow producers, you're paying us dividends, but how are you going to replace your resources and reserves? And if you look at the valuation of companies like Radisson and others, it's way cheaper to buy resources today then go out and drill for them. So you're gonna, I think you're gonna see a major arbitrage moment in the next you know, 12 to 24 months where the majors go, I can buy things at 10, 20, 30 dollars an ounce in the ground, or I can explore from them organically, it's gonna cost me hundred dollars an ounce to probably find a good deposit. So once that M&A cycle starts to kick off, once the animal spirits kick in, I think once gold breaks with $2,000 US an ounce, you'll see retail money come back in, the headlines will start to come. But the, the opportunity right now is, is incredible. I haven't seen a setup like this. I've been doing 25 plus years of commodity investing. This is a pretty rare setup. We have great fundamentals, and incredibly cheap stock prices. Typically, you don't see that. Right, and this is this is a little bit odd as well because you said you know it has to close one of two ways: either gold has to come down, or or the valuations have to come up. Uh, no one is predicting gold to come down significantly in the current environment, right? We have we have a, a difficult environment. You know, it, when rates start to fall, historically, gold does very well. Um, we have sustained buying from China and from central banks in general. This is part of de-dollarization, part of not necessarily wanting to hold U.S. dollar, or not or, or have U.S. dollar denominated assets or, or treasuries. Uh, you don't want to trust the U.S. dollar to be as liquid as it has been, as safe as it has been historically. So no one is predicting, and, and even when we saw before, before the, the outbreak of, of uh, conflict in the Middle East, even even after the the bid kind of came off from yeah. from the Russia Ukraine war, gold did not fall very far, right. and and there were so many stories of people analyzing and saying, look, gold should be two hundred dollars cheaper, gold should be two hundred fifty dollars cheaper, 
based on where everything else is, and it wasn't. Yeah. So in this type of an environment, I guess it's, uh, are, you, are you suggesting that the only way is up for these, for these companies? For these stocks. Gold is not going to fall down to meet these valuations. That's not my anticipation. And you, you brought up a lot of good points in that. I think the, the de-dollarization, whatever you want to call it, if you look at what the BRIC countries are doing, they've been selling treasuries relentlessly for the last two or three years. And where is that money going? It's going in the gold market, right? The most positive thing I've seen actually is a bit of a more nuanced point in the last two or three months is the, the bond market. You're starting to see the, the long end of the curve, the 10-year to 30-year bonds start to decouple or start to lose. The, the Fed's losing a bit of control on the long end of the bond market. I think with the massive deficits, two wars going on, no fiscal discipline in Washington, the BRIC countries see it, but now other investors start to see it going, I don't know if I want to own U.S. Treasuries on a 30-year basis at 5% yields because they're going to pay me back with devalued dollars or inflationary paper in the future. So you're starting to see gold assert itself again as, as money, as a, as a real reserve currency, as a viable option. And which reserve currency are you going to buy? You're not going to buy the M. You're not going to buy the euro. The U.S. dollar is losing its luster. So those money flows, the powerful money flows, we haven't seen the gold market for 40 to 50 years. The physical gold demand that we're seeing from central banks and other investors is going to start driving this cycle even further ahead. So I, I agree there's a strong underpinning for gold right now. And I think the equities are still in that state of disbelief depression. It's been a long grinding bear market for probably 10, 12 years with a little, little bit of break in 2022. You've got, to, you've got to reset that sentiment and have people start to feel good about the sector again. I think 24 is going to be a great year for the sector. And then looking at the majors as well. So the majors are also historically very undervalued. So we were talking about the juniors. So the juniors are waiting for the majors to come in and buy, invest, partner. Uh, the majors are also very, very undervalued relative to the price of gold. Do you see that catching up anytime soon? In particular, do you, do you think that as this, as this, what is becoming a gold bull market, as this is sustained, as this maintains these in the face of all these headwinds, do you see investors moving into uh, what are historically undervalued gold stocks as a way of capturing more upside for gold itself? Because one of the problems with gold over $2,000 is it is expensive. How much more upside is there in gold? You're going to make new all-time highs, and then you expect some profit taking, or you expect people to, to wait and see. But with, uh, with the gold stocks, the majors, as, as undervalued as they are, do you expect to see, have we seen this type of a shift where people begin to say, you know, I'd rather invest in the gold companies. I know there's, there's enormous upside in the, if gold stays where it is or goes even a little higher, yeah. there's way more upside in the companies than there is in the metal itself. Is that, is that the yeah, case? Yeah, I think once investors get comfortable, like you said, that the gold price is, is not going down from here, you'll start to see people, exactly what you said, rotating into the seniors and the mid-cap companies, the higher quality, multi-mine companies. And you're starting to see that, you know, the Alamos Golds of the world that are doing really well, Lending Golds, the mid-tier five, $10 billion market cap, the seniors are doing better. And then eventually as people get more and more confident, they'll go down cap to the single asset producers, into the developers. And then the last place to rally will be the juniors. But the, the available return as you go down the market cap is exponentially higher for the smaller companies. And they're starting from much lower valuations. So once you start seeing fund flows into the seniors and mid-tier companies, you'll know the juniors and the developers are, are right around the corner, right? And you're right, when, when the gold price stays up here, you'll get way more leverage and way more return by owning the equities and you will owning the physical gold. And that's the next step of the, the emerging bull market that we're talking about, but nobody's actually uh, investing in yet. And, and just again, not that we have a crystal ball, but when do, you, when do you think you might see the beginning of that chain reaction? I guess for, on the investments on, for the majors themselves. I think you've got to turn the calendar year. So I'm talking about tax, tax loss selling. For sure, in the smaller stocks have had bad years. So you got a little bit of tax loss selling pressure maybe for the next 30 to 45 days. I'm, I mean, social, I've been a social money manager for over 20 years. In December, you start to think about what's going to work in 2024. So what worked this year? You look back at your portfolio, you go, I had a great year in, in AI or you know, cloud computing. What's, what's the tech that's really going to do well in 2024? And portfolio managers slowly start to position their portfolio in December for the next year. November, October, you're still fighting tax loss selling, kind of cleaning up the losers in your portfolio. As investors start to pivot to next year and they look at the macro fundamentals, they look at the wars, the budget deficits, this is the valuation of the sector, the other value, relative valuation to others, I think people start to allocate more and more capital to gold. And as you know, the gold sector is very small in terms of market cap. I think Apple's market cap is two to three times the entire gold sector as a whole, including the major mining companies. It doesn't take much money to move these stocks a lot. So it's a small window. People try to run through at the same time. You see very, very dramatic price moves in this sector. All right, well, that's, uh, that's very encouraging. I guess that's music to the ears of many of the, uh, many of the companies uh, here at Explore. I hope so. I could have cheered them up a little bit today. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us uh, today, Michael. This is uh, very interesting, and we look forward to hearing more updates on Radisson and hopefully more good news for the sector as a whole. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. I'm Ernest Hoffman for Kitco Mining. Keep it here for more ongoing coverage from Explore 2023 in Montreal.
Kitco Mining special coverage of Explore 2023 is brought to you by Radisson Mining Resources.